Well, today I thought we'd go off on a little foraging adventure. Um, I'm going to go and forage some wild garlic. But on the way down, we've come across the pound, which uh, is a little structure, little brick structure on the outside of the village. And the pound, um, I believe, was built uh, probably in Victorian times and it got its name uh, because it was to enclose um, sheep that had sort of wandered and escaped from the fields and they'd be put in the pound uh, to be kept safe and fed until uh, the owners um, turned up to collect them. So we've got to walk past the pound. Lots of beautiful daffodils down here. No, not daffodils, sorry, dandelions. Daffodils have gone past the best now, but lots of dandelions, which I may come back to forage on another day. I've seen a recipe for dandelion, uh, dandelion marmalade, and apparently you can make it uh, using the flowers and make a beautiful yellow jam. So here we're coming next to the reading room, and... I was having a little look to see what I could find out about reading rooms. There's village room on the end here, but it is known locally as the reading room. And in Victorian times, reading rooms were sort of imposed upon the working class um, by the uh, church and the um, also the uh, upper classes as a way for the... Um, working man and agricultural workers to better themselves. In those days it was that newspapers were quite expensive and by the time they came to rural areas they'd have been out of date and maybe many people didn't read but the reading room would buy the papers in and people could go there and have um, papers read to them and sort of get involved with what was going on uh, in the rest of the world and hear what was going on in the towns. This side over here, I love this cottage. It's called Pound Cottage, uh, getting its name from the pound that we looked at, the brick structure. And um, it was previously a holiday let. And in recent times, people who've taken it over, um, I think the ladies and artists have done made the most wonderful garden. So I'm hoping that we may have a chance to peep in the gate a little bit lower down and see what they've got on. We're going to head down the little path here though. Some sandstones here. There we can see. I'm sure they won't mind us having a little peep over the garden. It's beautiful. Lots of spring structures there. You can see tulips in pots. Some fruit trees here. Got lots and lots of colour. Really, really is special. Got some old barns down this side. Woolerton was quite um, uh, only a little little parish, a part of Hodnet, and um, mainly milking, dairy, and I think wool. Woolerton, probably some sheep. It's some time in the past. I so. I'm going to go down this little green lane, which is where we're going to go and do our foraging. There's public footpaths down here and down to the wetlands. Okay, so I'm going to open the gate. Straight away, you can see that in this shady lane, there's lots of shade loving plants. Get the name of this little blue one here. I do know this one. Okay. It's a mustard, mustard vinegar, is it called? Mustard? Mustard something. And um, it's one of the favourites of the orange tip butterfly who like to lay their eggs on this plant. Ooh, scared a pheasant there. <laughs> startled me slightly too. Uh, and the orange tip butterfly uh, lays one leg, one egg on different leaves because when the caterpillars um, hatch they are actually cannibalistic and so 
I don't know how the butterfly herself knows that her babies are going to be cannibalistic and it's best to lay the eggs separately, but nature's a wonderful thing and somehow over the years they've worked that out. Okay, we're getting into the deeper shade now and it's the wild garlic that we're going to go and pick down here. Looks like there's been a little collapse here of some ivy. Old tree has come across the path. Somebody's kindly cut a way through. And the brambles are all sort of climbing over this tangled pile. Aha! This is what we're after though. Wild garlic. Okay, so you can see it here. These beautiful flowers. It's a part of the Allium family. And it's got various names. Um, I know it is wild garlic, but in some areas it's known as Ramsons. And bear garlic is another name for it. Buckram, another one. But apparently bear garlic is... Um, given to it because it is a favourite um, of bears who, the brown bear in Europe, who like to dig it up uh, for the bulbs which I suppose must taste uh, quite different from other things. Maybe it helps the bears to keep the vampires away too. But the way to use wild garlic is to use the leaves and um, you can use them in various ways. You can use them in soups or you can make uh, some garlic pesto. I'm actually going to make some soup which I shall tell you about shortly. But you can tell exactly what it is. If you look at the stem here, it's sort of three-sided in profile and um, it comes up in the springtime usually before the trees so that it gets some light. In Europe, where Lily of the Valley grows, it can be uh, confused and Lily of the Valley is actually poisonous. But you can check it out by the stem, let's say, which is three-sided. And also if you crush a bit of the leaf and then you smell that. Yes, definitely a, a nice pungent smell. I'm going to go down a little bit more. Before I start my foraging, I want to make sure that I'm away from where any dog walkers um, would be coming. So here we go, there's loads of it as you can see. And it tends to like um, sort of shady and damp areas. Again, you can just see those beautiful little flowers on there with six little petals on each one. And they still come up in these like almost um, like little, little florets. Okay. You can hear the birds which are going to accompany me while I do my picking. It's going to go down to the end of the path and just to see what's down here. Lots of nettles down here and ground elder. But we shouldn't be too um, dismissive of these plants. The nettles themselves are a great source um, uh, of habitat for butterflies. Peacock butterflies lay their eggs on nettles, as does the small tortoise shell. So they're really, really important for our wildlife. I'm going to go back because there's no more garlic down there, although there is the uh, Garlic mustard, that was the name of this little flower I couldn't quite remember before. I've not tried cooking with that yet, but I should give that a go. Here's the garlic mustard, which you can see totally different shaped leaf on there. Pretty little flowers. Not quite sure um, what recipes you use that for. That's one for me to research. But back to the wild garlic. I'm going to find the most lush pile at the back, as I say, to avoid any dog walking areas. So this is where I'm going to go. In fact, I can see that 
somebody has been down and taken a few little clumps themselves which is what I'm going to do now I've got my scissors and my little bag for just that job the way to use wild garlic um, to make a soup um, is a really simple recipe and it involves uh, it just needs onion potato garlic vegetable stock and cream and what you do is you uh, use one onion, chop it finely and sauté it in the butter. You need about three um, potatoes, peel, chop, add some stock, about a litre and a half maybe, and you boil that for about 15-20 minutes until the uh, potatoes are soft. At that point, add your garlic leaves you can chop them if you like, but let them wilt down and then you finally just give them a whiz up in the blender and you can add some cream or oh, I've not got cream in at the moment so I'm going to do half stock and half milk and hopefully that will be a lovely tasty soup. Hope you've enjoyed the video and maybe you will have been inspired to, to try some soup. Bye for now.